Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Agent Mini Man. This is our first episode of Mini Whippin' Wednesday. Today I'll be teaching how to make a mousetrap catapult. Um, while I was preparing for this video, um, I got my finger stuck in one of these things and I've been out here for a while preparing for it so I'm sweaty as heck and my hand hurts so I apologize if I make any really bad mistakes or crush my finger again. Um, once again I have to do this outside because these things can fling and they have a not so consistency to them so I don't want to be doing it inside where it could hit a wall or something. Originally I said I wasn't going to start Mini Weapon Wednesday until I got Summertron Gaming going, but then I changed my mind. I want to have the daily poll not be on Wednesdays and to just have Mini Weapon Wednesday instead. So here we are, episode one. So what you're going to need for this set is ammo, which for this I've chosen Pinto Beans. Really, it doesn't really matter. Um, then you'll need some form of string, the mouse trap scissors, a stapler, and duct tape. Um, I'm getting this from John Austin's Mini Weapons of Mass Destruction book. Um, I highly recommend that you buy it. It has a lot of really cool things that I'll be showing off in these videos, and I bet you all will really like. So, first I'd actually like to start with a little bit of a de demonstration. So right here we just pull the tab back, and it operates a lot like a um, like a normal mouse trap, except that when you build it, you um, limit the maximum angle it can go to, and it and put a piece of duct tape over the bar like this, so that you can um, actually just fling um, instead of crush your ammo. And this one, I just broke. Whoops. So, as you can see, I just took the bar off of this one. There we go. Fixed. Backwards, of course. Sorry, this is really not good for a start of the video, but trust me, it will get better. Um, I'm just kidding. You should never trust me. I, I'm not very trustable. <laughs> no. Seriously. Alright, so. You just simply insert that into there. This is our activation lever. Put your ammo on the duct tape, which is what we used to cover the expansion hole. Um, this string right here is actually stapled to the bottom of the pad so that the ammo, um, the thing will go up and stop at a point. Um, I'm gonna have to do it like this or else it will jerk out of my hand when I activate it. So let's do this. You might have seen that, you might not have. There was about 15 feet of wall between my house and that camera. It flung from me, I'm about two and a half feet from the camera, over the camera and hit the um, balcony that we have from our second story. So yeah, that went far. And I will, at the end of the video, the one that we're making, I'm gonna fire it over this wall so you can see just how far it goes. Okay, so let's get straight on with it, obviously. First thing you'll need is the mouse trap. So the first thing you'll want to set up is actually putting the um, stuff in place for it. So there will be a staple holding the trap bar down. Just lift the trap bar up, staple pop out. You don't need that anymore. Um, you take the trap bar and make it so that it's at about 45 degrees. And then we have to cut a piece of string now, um, in, when I was making the other version to um, prepare for the video, I um, held down the bar while I was getting the string, and it snapped on me. That was not fun for me. These bars are really annoying. Um, I might have to uh, use this on them if they won't shut up by the end of the episode. So what you're going to do is you can use any type of string and just tie it around this bar, if you can see that here, um, you will want to tie it multiple times depending on what kind of string. Right now I'm using barbecue string, so I'm gonna probably like triple tie it. Um, but yeah, so just tie it around, cause 
usually most strings will work for it. It's just a matter of whether or not will hold. Because, you know, mouse traps, they go fast and they yank hard. Most strings can handle the yank, but most knots can't. So I just double tied that there. Um, then you go to the 45 degree angle and go under the trap. Now hold that string there so you know where you want it to be and hold the bar all the way down with both hands or one hand while you're doing this because you do not want this thing um, flinging open on you. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your stapler, open it, and you're going to staple the string to the bottom of the pad. That was not good. Let's try that again. I recommend putting it down on a flat surface so that it is easier to manage and putting in a series of staples so that the string will be held in place through multiple very harsh jerks. So as you can see, I didn't make my string go all the way. So what you can do is simply depress it to the angle you want and pull very hard on this because you just stapled it down. And now it's at about the angle we want it to be. So this string, you'll probably never adjust again, but keep the slack there in case the trap yanks it farther than that. Um, you'll want to have that so that you can reset it. Then we take a piece of duct tape and we just cut it out so it's almost perfectly square and will fit this little square created by the spring here. So let's do that. That's about the right size. My red safety scissors. There we go. And you're going to want to place it directly on the face of this and then wrap it around the edges so that it will hold on. On this one, I made it too small and so this edge, the tape is coming off on, you don't want that to happen, so make sure it goes all the way around and loops back. Okay, so now it's fine. time for the third and final step. You'll see that the little cheese stick here that um, acts as the trigger has a hole that goes straight through it. What you want to do is get another piece of string. This one, it does not matter how long it is, but it's recommended that it's relatively long because this is what you're going to need to pull it to activate it. So you just loop the string through that hole right there. Don't use the hole that the, that the pole will go, th go through. Sorry, I really, don't use the hole that the pole is going to go through or else it will not fit and your trap will not work. So what you're going to want to do is tie it multiple times. Once again, um, this one is not going to be flinging, but you wouldn't want it to um, come undone because if it does, then you um, have no way of setting it off. And the worst thing that can ever happen with a weapon is having it primed, loaded, ready to go, and not being able to set it off because then you have to carefully disarm it and that is just a really, really hard process. So now this is almost complete. Well, actually the whole thing really is complete, but what you still need to do is um, apply the ammo and fire. So before you prime it, you have to put the ammo on. You um, pull the, ah crap, dang it. I made the bar go on, make sure that you have your bar going on the correct side of the string or else you won't be able to fire it. So I'm going to have to carefully remove this. Crap. And put it back on on the other side. Sorry for the inconvenience, just sometimes things go wrong. Always multiple things that can go wrong and you can't fix all of them. So what you're gonna wanna do is that hole that I told you to save, you're gonna wanna put the, um, the pole into it. 
Sometimes you're going to have to bend this so that it will fit. Um, that was just a... Sorry. Alright, so you're going to want this thing to be able to hold the pole down. Okay? Like so. Okay. Now, we apply the ammo. I'm using pinto beans. Really, anything that's small with lots of them will work, but I've found that big objects won't work too well. I used a pencil top eraser when I was testing it, and it didn't work too well for me. So, what I'm going to do is come over to this side of the table, make sure you hold it um, from like here or something, because if you don't, then when you pull the string, it will launch the trap forward too, and you don't want that. So, ready? Three, two, one. I don't know if you saw that, but they all went into that plant. And this is what it'll look like afterward. Um, see how it's stapled in? And then it comes to hold this bar up. Normally, the string is supposed to hold it in place, but at this time, it didn't. Um, like I said, you need to keep that slack because if this happens, then you'll want to be able to pull it tight again. And hopefully not get your string caught on the duct tape. So, there you go. I'm going to give you one last test fire. Um, and then I'm going to leave you for this video. So, once again, bar in the hole. Weapon in position. Make sure that bar is securely in that hole. You don't want it going off on its own, or you could severely smash your fingers. Which I've experienced a couple minutes ago. Not fun. And I'm sweating my brains out because it's September in Phoenix and it's 110 out here. Ugh. This is absolutely dreadful, but I love doing these videos. Nothing in the world is funner except doing it with other people maybe firing them at other people so ready three two one fire if everybody had an ocean across the usa then everybody be surfing like california you see them wearing their baggies Arachi sandals too